Welcome, my friends and brethren in the Lord, in this beautiful morning, in this devotional God's Word for today. And thank God that He has given us another opportunity that we can read and study the Word of God together and learn principles from His Word today. Let me read to, to us our text for today in Acts chapter 9, verses 23 to 25. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. This is Saul. But their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him. But his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. This is an amazing story of escape of the Apostle Paul. He was lowered in a basket. And let's learn principles from this narrative, from this story. Let's remember that Paul went to Damascus for the purpose that he was going to persecute and hunt down and drag the believers into prison. But here, Paul, the hunter of believers, became the hunted person of the Jews. Paul, who was the predator, now he becomes the prey from the angry Jews. The Jews must felt betrayed. Why? Because he was supposed to be their number one hatchet man. He was supposed to be the number one persecutor. And in a sudden, Paul became their number one problem or the number one enemy because they found him preaching at the synagogues in Damascus. Jesus is the Son of God. What a turn of events, isn't it? It's understandable how the Jews reacted so that they plotted to kill him at Damascus. They didn't want that Paul will be able to spread the good news, will be able to preach Jesus about Jesus from Damascus. So better that he, have, that he would be killed in Damascus alone. So what they did was that they surrounded the city of Damascus and saw to it that every door exit should be sealed and had watched his movements closely 24-7. But we know that God is the helper of the Apostle Paul. As the psalmist wrote in Psalm 121, verse 1, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Even the psalmist even continued to say, that the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night, because the Lord will preserve you. The Lord will preserve you from evil, even from today and forevermore. This is the assurance of every one of us. Should the Lord have still plans for us in everything that we do in life, let us remember when our task, when there are still some things to do um, in, in our lives, ministry, whatever, when we have not yet done it, we are immortal until God's work is finished in us. When all doors are sealed, we know that there was an opening of the door or, or the wall so that they were, they were able to, to lower the basket through it. It is said that Necessity is the mother of invention. The brethren thought of lowering him down in a basket from that opening at the wall. But let's remember, man can plan, but it's God who can make the plan work. Uh, as Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. It's not wrong to plan. There was a crisis. Paul's life was in danger. They have to think of how he could escape. But unless the Lord bless it, they will not be able to succeed. What is wrong is to do 
a plan without prayer and God's guidance. It's not wrong to plan, but let's situate that God is involved in our planning. When in fact, he must be before us in everything. In fact, the Bible tells us that God orders our steps. That is, he guides us to the right path every step at a time. That's why the Lord tells us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and the Lord shall direct your paths. Definitely, God has many things rich in store for Paul ahead. God has just called him to be a preacher to the Gentiles. God has a plan that he could use Paul to spread the gospel in that part of the world, especially in Europe. We, we all know that Paul was not afraid to die. What he feared only was that he would not be doing the will of God. He was not afraid to die. In the same manner, all believers like us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not afraid to die, do we? The fact of death is not anymore a scare or a, a, a reality that we are afraid because we know that to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. Whenever we think of death, it is just an open door towards heaven's splendor or heaven's glory. That from the time that we will pass from this life into the next, we know that we'll be in the presence of God. We are not afraid of that. What we are afraid is we are not doing the will of God. That we are not fulfilling his will before the time that will call us home. So Paul was not afraid to die in a sense that he wrote in the book of Philippians. Philippians 1 verse 20 to 25, he said, As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with, all, what, but with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. Yes, Paul did escape, not because he was afraid to die, but because he knew that the Lord has still wonderful things ahead of him. God has a wonderful plan for his life. God, in the next new few years, will use him to preach the gospel even to Europe. So what's the lesson for us today in this narrative, in this story? Today, should you and I are religiously doing the will of God, and we are preaching the gospel, and we are actively involved in the work of God, we are disturbing the devil's nest. We are pounding against the forces of the enemy with the gospel. And remember, Satan is not just going to let us do it without any fight. Satan will not just let us walk into the park. He is the adversary and he will oppose us vehemently. But let us be assured that God is the one in control, is he not? God is the one who has the power to protect us and to preserve us. He has his own way of protecting his own people. Of course, we know in the Bible that some of those who believe in him, he allowed them to perish. He allowed them to die. But as I said, they did not afraid to die because die or death means to be ushered into his presence until such time that God and his plan and his purposes in your life will be over. Then he will take us home. But the Bible tells us that with the temptations and trials that come into our way, God will provide a way to escape that we will be able to bear it. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 
somehow he will put us into his basket in order to escape unharmed. Let's be assured that in your life, in my life, whatever the situation right now, there might be some dangers, there might be some challenges or crisis in life. He will put us into his basket because he's the one who is in control. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that this morning we have learned this wonderful story of how Paul had experienced your grace to escape from his enemies through that basket where he was inside, lowered down, in order to escape from his captors. And this story reminds us, Lord, that you are always in control. Yes, Lord, we know that if you are going, we are going to pursue your will and proclaim the gospel, the enemy will do everything in order to discourage us, to oppose the work of God. But thank you that you are always the sovereign God who is in control. Thank you that today I can pray for the brethren who might have some difficulties and crisis in their lives. Let it be your father that you'll prove yourself strong in their behalf. Protect and preserve each one of them, Lord, today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.